On this episode, Lewis stops by to talk greatness. This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 157 of the Ask Gary V Show. AKA, if you got a book, come on and hawk that shit <laughs> on the show. First, my father in law, now my good buddy, Lewis. Lewis, for the very few in the Vayner Nation that don't cross over and know who you already are, uh, why don't you give a little bit of your spiel? And then India and whatever, we'll get into the show. Okay. Uh, a little bit about me? Um, yes. About me. Uh, I met this guy, how many years ago did I meet you? Maybe seven years ago. Was it during the Crush It tour? 2009, 2008, 2009. 2009. Uh, And this guy inspired me to build a business and take it to a whole nother level. I was in a transition, I was sleeping on my sister's couch, I had a cast on, I broke my wrist playing professional football. And uh, the amount of hustle that this guy had really inspired me to figure out what I wanted to do next with my life. So I spent a lot of time researching, finding mentors, studying, taking a lot of action, making a ton of mistakes, but learning along the way in the process of taking that action. And built uh, a couple seven-figure businesses along the way and then started a podcast and that's where the book is coming from. The podcast seems to be the place where your brand took a different level, right? Like for me, from afar, you know, you were playing in the space of a lot of people trying to build personal brands and things of that nature and how does one differentiate? Mm -hmm. When did you get serious about the podcast? Why did you get serious about the podcast? It's interesting because you mentioned something to me in the car in St. Louis, Missouri when I drove you from an event to another event or something in a hotel. And you said, I see you making a lot of money and building an audience, but you're not at the mainstream level yet. You said something like, you're not at the mainstream media level yet, and that's where I want to see you go. So you said this to me, and I remember taking it to heart, because I was making a lot of money, I was growing, but I was like, does people in the press want to have me on their show? Yep. And I said I got to build a You've made the mainstream. Yeah, right, exactly. (laughs) And so I spent a, a lot of time really figuring out what does that mean to build a brand? What does that mean to like, create different type of content. The podcasting world in 2012, late 2012, when I was seeing other friends getting into it, I realized like this is something that I could. This is happening. This is happening. And I was like, I think I could do this. Yep. You know? If these guys can do it, I could do it. Yep. I didn't know what to expect. I just said for the first year, I'm not gonna try to make any money. Yep. I'm not gonna take any sponsors. I'm just gonna go. And interview people, put out content. the best people I can find and, and give them my all. And so it's interesting. In March, I come out with the Ask Gary V book. That's the play of your podcast into the book. What are you promising people that have listened to your podcast in this book that doesn't translate from the. Yeah, yeah, here's the thing. You know, I interview all these inspiring people. You know, you've been on the show, and it's like we get these great lessons, we hear these stories, and that's great. But what are the actionable exercises and practices that we can use in our daily life to take that action and get the results. It's one thing to be inspired. Did you write this? Did you do it the way I do where you have a ghostwriter and you I audio wrote it, it? like a couple people that helped me. But yep. a lot of interviewing back and forth, a lot of editing back and forth. Yep. Um, can you write? A little bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, as a dyslexic I, guy, it's kind of challenging. But, yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's, it's a hard work for I me. I can't write. Right, right Indian exactly. Steve? <laughs> I mean, That's why, you know, one of the, one of the principles. <laughs> Have you ever gotten an email from me? <laughs> Woo. One of the principles is building a championship team. Yep. And I know that in order to put out a great product, I need yep. to have a great team around me of writers, editors, publisher to support the process because I couldn't do it on my own. Very cool, There's man. no way. Good for you. Congrats. Thanks, Proud man. of you. When's it out? It's out today. All right. Well, then let's link that up. Yes. It's a big day. I'm humbled that you want to be on this show on your big day. What else are you doing today media-wise? Uh, I did Fox and Friends this morning. I yep. did uh, Good Day New York this morning, Fox 5. I'm doing Fox and Friends this weekend. But this is the most important show of the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, India, let's get into this show. Oh, I like when we get that thing. What is that called again? Harmony. What's that? It's harmony. harmony. I don't think that's what it is. It's a harmony. <laughs> We're, We're harmonizing. I... All right, let's go, India. Martina asks, when making important decisions, do you trust your own gut and experience, or do you count on some advisor as well? Who's your go-to person on a real decision? Mm. Do you have one? You know, it used to be my dad. Yep. But uh, he had a, a pretty 
uh, extreme car accident about 10 years ago, so we Sorry. can't really comprehend certain things at that level anymore. But I would go to a guy named Stuart Jenkins, who okay. uh, works at a big brand called Deckers, a billion dollar shoe company that owns Ugg and Tesla yep, and, I know and all those uh, brands. And he's just like a straight shooter, tells me how it is, great family guy. Doesn't try to, po doesn't try to pander he to what you want to hear. Ego. Yep. Like, he just like tells me he's got such good integrity ah, and morals. That's why I don't speak to anybody. I don't want anybody <laughs> touching my ego. Exactly, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I talk to him when really issues. How much, what percentage of decisions do you make on your gut? A lot. What, I, what percentage? Probably 100%. <laughs> okay. Probably 100 percent. So I you mean, just you I, really don't give a shit what Stewart says. No, I advise with everyone yes. on tough decisions, but I always know the answer. Got you know it. What I mean, it's yeah. like I know the answer, but I feel like I has anybody sure. wavered you from the answer? <sighs> People have given me different opinions, but I always know. Yes, they have. They okay. have. They waver me. Okay. And then I realize I shouldn't have taken that advice. So at gone. times where you haven't gone with your gut and you've gone with people that you think have made it or other yes. things, it hasn't paid off. So you're now defaulting as you're maturing yes. into your own place. Yes. I mean, for me, I've always been that way. Um, and I think that what ha it's interesting to hear your perspective. It's fun to have guests a little bit because you would have gotten my answer of, you know, no. And like, I respect my mom and dad uh -huh. and things of that nature, but I don't even. I, I love them with all my heart. I just make my own decisions. I just yeah. don't. I don't know what else to say about this. But it's interesting. I come that from a, from an athlete background, so I was constantly coached, constantly sure. getting feedback. Yep. So I like to have the coaching. That makes sense. In an environment, so I can just take action and apply the information. But a lot of the times, I know the answer. It's just trusting myself. 100%. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I I think the the one thing is the actionable item from this show, taking the theme from your book, and we'll continue to act on it. So, uh, I think you should really try if you're watching the show, to try the opposite on the next decent side decision. As long as it's not a top three decision in your life, then do right. you. If it's a fourth biggest decision type of thing, <laughs> try the other way as context. I may even try to, I, no I can't. But, <laughs> that last, it didn't even last the sentence. But, I think that would be interesting. Yeah. Because I'm intrigued by you ending up in this place. My intuition is a lot of people end up in that place as they get older and older because at some level, you'd rather, I'm, for, my, for me, I'd rather go down my way. Mm, like you know, that. That, that to me is probably the thing. When you're making real decisions, there's upside and there's downside. That's why they're big decisions. If I'm gonna go down, I wanna go down because I screwed up. Mm -hmm. Like, not because somebody else gave me advice and it just didn't work out. That's yeah. just, yeah. All right, India. I think that segues really well into the next question. Oh, a lot of segueing going on. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel asks, what is the best example in your life where your ego has gotten the best of you? How significant was it in retrospect? Well, this is great, right? Because you've already oh dropped ego. I almost called this the ego show. <laughs> so, you know, uh, what was the question? <laughs> where the ego got the best of you. Yeah, and how significant was it in retrospect? Oh my gosh, should I go? Sure, me. yeah, go ahead. Uh, for me, oh man, any relationship that I've been in, I allow my ego to get the best of me in the past. Yep. Where it's With like, like girls, you mean? Yes. Okay, go yes. ahead. And then it just affects me. It like consumes. What's everything. the ego part? Like you think you're hotter than them? No, no, no. It's like oh. after like <laughs> after like um, I don't know. Like after we break up or end things. It's okay. Like, you don't want to call first and say it's just that like, was cool run. I don't know. It's just like I'm still holding on to things and I can't let certain things go and I'm like mad still or pissed or why it didn't work out and that holding on to things as opposed to fully letting go. Yeah will hold me back in other areas of my life and just my, yeah. my health, my business, like making clear decisions and that ego, I gotta fully let go in those Interesting. Situations. What That's, about you? For me, I think, you know, with ego, I think it's things that I don't know. Mm. So I thought you know everything. Well, I know everything that actually has happened. So, so maybe my ego of recognizing, well, no, uh, so hear like, me out, India. Yeah. Like, let me give you an example. I know you're <laughs> laughing over there and having a good time. Uh, let me explain. I would tell you that I slash, it was the right business decision, but ego of like not doing a lot of television shows because I feel like the world's gonna change and I wanna own the IP, maybe kept me away from being 50,000 times bigger because clearly I'd be incredible. I'd probably be the biggest TV star on TV if Why I decided to do a TV a show. Because I still believe in this thesis, which is. Why can't you do both? Uh, you can. What, you can. What are you waiting for? I, you know, I'm busy as shit here. I mean, what do you think's going on? Like, I'm Dude, busy. I'm like overwhelmed by like, just being in here. Oh, you're on one of the like three floors of insane. four offices. It's like, amazing. there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if egos kept me away from mainstream media. 
Um, you were just on Bloomberg this morning, right? Yeah, that's different than hosting Having a show. show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you would be the biggest TV personality. I believe that, Louis. Say it again. Lynn, India, you, you say it too. You would be the biggest TV personality in the world. Yeah, I want world. you to say it because I know you don't want to say it. <laughs> no, I want you to say it. You would be so huge on television. No, see what she did? She hedged. I'd never be able to be on TV after you again. <laughs> that was good. Uh, <laughs> cut that clip for me, uh, uh, D-Rock, for just a ringtone. Um, so I... Uh, I think there's been an enormous mm. amount of things that have impacted me, predicated my ego. I just don't know what they are because they're the things that I didn't do versus the things that I did. The things that I've done with my ego, I know the outcomes, they've all been pretty damn positive. It's the things that I don't, that I'm passing on mm. that I can never play out and know what would have happened. Mm. That's where my upside is on the table. My, me being bigger financially, brand, happiness, opportunity, me being bigger is predicated on my no's, not my yeses. What would be the ultimate show that you could have on any network, any time? Who would you be doing or with? Would it be yourself? Yeah. What topic? You know what's funny? What I, don't, I don't, uh, I've thought about that a lot and I don't think about it a lot. Meaning, meaning, I used to think about the format. What would I want to do? I'm so not in the mindset of having a TV show right now. I'm so enjoying this. I'm enjoying the way I'm going about marketing this and the white spaces and where the world's going and how over the top is changing the world. I mean, look. If I had a business show on Netflix, if Netflix came to me right now and said, we want to make you our business show, that'd be really tough to say no to. Um, so I would say that because it's of the moment. Um, really, it's not mainstream cable or network or anything? No, because I'd rather go to where the puck's going mm, and I'd rather, I'd rather be part of the narrative of you know, those shows, House of Cards, Orange and New Black, then oh, yeah. whatever sports deal they do, and then that business show, that's where they competed with CNBC, yeah. like, you know? That's what I did with the podcast, uh, I saw the yeah, opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly right, and that's where the upside is. You wait yeah. and you let the puck come to you. I, I would say I, I would say CNBC and Bloomberg are interesting to me because it's just right down the pipe of business. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, I just, I can't get there. Mm. India? Um, this one, we're both wearing all black today. Yeah, let's stand up and show everybody. I'm like really all black. Yeah, you black really are you? You're all black. Well, I have gray you, tights on. Yeah, well, I'm I'm black. Look at wow. this black socks. Look at this black underwear. Wow. Yeah, I'm all black <laughs> today. It's just really dark today. Super dark. Okay. Be matchy matchy. Yeah, get in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. B. B. B asks, how do you deal with losing a client? Just lost one, and I'm mad as hell. Yeah, mad as hell is good. You know, I think mad as hell is appropriate. Um, I, uh, when I lose a client, the first thing that I think about is what did I do wrong? And then um, most of the time I have an answer. If I don't have an answer, I try to figure it out. But I'm pretty interesting when it comes to losing a client. I'm, uh, I'm very much on to the next one. Like, mm. like, the, like I, I, on the other hand, am very lucky. Listening to you was really interesting. I was sitting here and saying, my God, my ability to like dump and move on in any situation, mm. relationships, That's business, powerful. It's the game for me. Yes. It's why I'm always in a good mood. Like, I literally sit on bad news and bad stuff for fractions of seconds. D-Rock shaking his head, right? You, what right? about with intimate yeah. or personal relationships with friends or family? Now do you, do you just say, screw you, I'm off to the next person? I haven't really lost anybody who I would call in my most inner circle. I've had relationships that have, like my longest girlfriend relationships that ended were predicated on me sitting on it longer than I want. It was in my head for a long time anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I've been very blessed that somebody that meant the world to me hasn't decided to leave me. Oh, that's um, so that's one part of it. Uh, and the other part is I haven't, you know, outside of a couple long-term girlfriend relationships, I haven't, had an, I haven't parted from anything that's been in my inner core. Um, in business, I've had to fire people I care a lot about. Um, but I've come to a place where I recognize that I was doing more harm by keeping them here and giving them no growth here, Wine Library. So, yeah, that's, that's that. Anything that you want to add on that? No. All right, let's do it. Jarek. Oh, Jarek. I've been seeing Jarek show up a bunch. Oh, no. Hamilton. He's been popping up a bunch lately on my feed. Hey, what's going on, Gary Vee? My company got accepted really to be chill. a part of the Alpha program at Collision 2016 in New Orleans. I've never been to an event like this, so I'm not really sure what to prepare for or how to prepare for it. I was wondering what would you do if you were in my shoes, if you were going to not necessarily look for money, but more looking to make contacts. I'd appreciate any information, any insights you might have on the situation. Thanks, Jarek. Really legit American flag waving so beautifully <laughs> in the background. 
I, I did notice the Giants t-shirt, so I'm a little bit pissed with Jarek now. <laughs> Lewis, any thoughts on that? I mean, I think you know you wanted to establish your name yes. in the marketing and business world. I assume you started going to a lot of events for the first time through the last half decade. Yes. How did you approach it? You know, I remember when I was broke on my sister's couch, <laughs> I took a Greyhound to one of my first events in 2008. It was in New York, it was like a, a sports film festival in Philly. And I took a Greyhound, uh, and I had a, a suit jacket and, a, and a, a carry-on case. And I remember I had a hostel room that I got for like 17 bucks. Yep. Because I knew the value. I met a guy named Ben Sterner, who I think you know, who, who works out of here. He was like, you gotta come to this event, you're gonna meet a lot of powerful people that's gonna help your business, your, your relationships, your brand. So I was like, I gotta get there. I rented a hostel for 17 bucks the first night. I walk in late at night and there's throw up all over the ground. There's throw up all over the door, <laughs> all over the bathroom, and 20 snoring European guys in the room. Yep. But I knew the value right when I got to this event, how important it was to connect with influencers and powerful individuals. Yep. And I stayed up all night with people and just built the relationships with them. It wasn't about being at the event, it was figuring out where people were going after the event and getting in with their friends and then yep. creating friendships with people. I never talked about business or asked for advice. Yep. I just said, what's going on in your life? Yep. Like, how can we be buddy-buddy? Yep. And let's do thumb wrestling wars or yep. whatever, like I did with you yep. in 2009 or yep. something. It's like, let's have fun as opposed to yep. talk about the thing you don't want to talk about right now. You know, to me, Jarek, I think it's a really good question and um, I, I, think that, I think that's right, right? I mean, I think at some level, if you're not meeting people, you're not hitting on your KPI. I think Lewis speaks to patience in a relationship. I think it really matters. You know, trying to throw around your business card or pitch your business is completely the opposite move. I mean, just to not Please. cut you off, but Please. to set an example, I mean, I've been, um, essentially jabbing for six years with you. That's right. I've never asked for anything. I bought a shitload of these books. I, <laughs> but I've never asked for anything except for this book. a blurb on the back. Yep. Which, you know. Which is a big deal because I don't like giving them out. It's a big deal. And also, hey, I'm, can I come on the show? Yeah. And, and I bought a show. buy some books. Yes. Yeah. Which is my own advice, right? I yes. like talk about that yeah. a lot, which is like cash in all those chips when you've got your signature moment. Like you need this to do well. It's, exactly. a, it's another watershed moment in your career. But for, what's the guy's name again? Jarek. Jarek. For Jarek, I would not ask anyone for support or help right now. I would just say, how can I give to that person? Listening to, listening to Lewis's narrative, Jarek, I think one of the biggest things that people make mistakes for is they go for short-term yes. nickels and dimes instead of long-term dollars, mm -hmm. right? So if, you're, if you find, the, the more important the person you encounter in New Orleans, the more you should not ask for anything. Too many times, I mean, the amount of people that roll up on me, I have no idea idea who they are and they want $100,000 from me because they're gonna help me buy the Jets um, is, uh, is pretty intense. Like yeah. there's no context, it's, it's not the right move. Now, again, back to his story. Go sleep with 20 snoring throw up dudes for 17 bucks if you've got a practical financial problem. Have the humility yes. to go sleep on your sister's couch if you have a financial problem, if your financial problem needs to be solved by you going to the most important people on first impact and asking for $25,000, you've put yourself in a bad position. So I think what you need to do is put yourself in a position where you put no pressure on yourself to close at this event, but build at this event. Yeah, and look at the long term. Think of relationships for five years down the line. 100%. India? Last question from Adam. Well, privacy, sorry. It's Am I freaking you out? No, sorry. I'm kind of used to it. Will privacy related... Well, you said privacy. Like, like, like. <laughs> Adam asks, will privacy related issues be the ultimate Achilles heel for social networks, including Facebook? I'll jump in here. Uh, the answer is no, because there's a pendulum swing. The reason Snapchat grew was because it was a safer place, uh, a place that stuff would disappear. Uh, I actually think the next wave is gonna be, I think they'll be more closed over the next decade, you got Cyberdust, Cubes thing, like you've got Snapchat, I think there's more room for that. I think there'll be another one or two. I think the reason WhatsApp and other things of that nature, messaging apps are doing well is in theory to people, it's closed by comparison. Um, but I think actually in the long, long term, 10, 12, you know, eight, 10, 12 years from now, there'll be another push back to open. It's generational, right? It's like fashion, right? Like, it's, it's, like it goes through ebbs and flows. Like, as a matter of fact, with everybody being so kind of hipster and the way everybody is now, the other day I was thinking, I was like, crap, I wonder where we're gonna, like, when are we gonna go conservative again? Like, mm -hmm. when everybody got the friends haircut and like, like, I'm curious, like, and I was thinking about like grunge, which was crazy weird. Anyway, it made me think about that and that's how I think about social networks. Like, this is the mood of a generation. The 60s are different than the 70s and the 80s and 90s and 2000s. 
happens. I definitely think people will, be, will freak out about privacy. I think Ashley Madison is a, a, a proxy to other things. Like just imagine now all of us, if all of our information of every text, email, and engagement and I mean texts and WhatsApps and whatever else you're using to creep, Tinder. Imagine all those conversations plop out and it's just searchable. Like literally, Lewis, everything you've said <laughs> digitally. Scary. Yeah, and so I, I actually think that happens. And then I wow. think Nirvana happens because really? everybody realizes how flawed everybody is. Wow. So like I've got a very we- positive point of view on where this all goes. I think there'll be some, I do think privacy will contain people to some different behaviors. But I actually think if you play the chess moves out, Everybody's laundry gets aired out, which changes society forever. And we roll in a completely different way and the things we accept as norms, the way we think about interpersonal relationships and what makes a good person and a bad person fundamentally changes with the great data breach of 2022. Because everyone, we realize that everyone's a freak. Well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> you, you take it where you want, Lewis. <laughs> but I definitely think I definitely think that that's a real possibility. Yeah, I, I think that I think when you, you think have. What happen by? I, you know, I don't know, but I, like I can. Your predictions. I, 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 I don't like to predict things that I don't, like I like to predict things that already happened and everybody didn't realize they happened. <laughs> this way I'm right. Um, I think that, uh, I just think it's a real possibility and, and I definitely live my life with all my flaws and what have you with the knowledge of that could happen and I have to be, we have to be prepared for the repercussions of, like I always say the, the right thing is always the right thing, like you know, the, the end score is the end score. Like if you do wrong things by today's standards and they become aware, like you'll have to deal with that. So do you like that you put yourself out there and, and such an authentic way and vulnerable way a lot of times where you talk about your flaws because then if it yes. does come out people yes. are like, well, yes. it doesn't matter. Yes, but I'm a human being. Like, right. like I think a lot about when I'm doing things in a very private setting, how that maps to my public persona. Like if this hits the fan, like does that undermine what I'm saying? And I try to stay in that lane because it'll still at least make sense in my narrative. Like you can't be the person that like, like says like, that holier than thou guy that was like cheating on his wife, like that was tough. Like you can't be that, you can't be like the prosecutor and and go after prostitution when you're using prostitutes, right? right? Like America will not accept that complete like insanity. The world will accept if you waver. I think we all know we have skeletons. I mean, I don't even want to know what the Steve's up to. Like, (laughs) thanks, Gary. You're welcome. No worries. But like, you know, I think I think that we I think I'm excited and I hope I live through seeing it and I may not and it might be much longer, but. I do want us, I'm very, I wish people lived the life that I live, which is, of course I judge people, but boy, do I <laughs> unjudge them very quickly. Like, humans are flawed, like in so many ways, and we need to start accepting our shortcomings a lot more, and I wonder if this data thing, which sounds scary, privacy's gonna go away, da, 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 it's very, it's Armageddon, but I actually think it's the starting point to a, to a better society. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Interesting, right? That's it? All right, Lewis, want to do any parting shots? We're going to link up the book on YouTube and Facebook for you. Yeah, so, uh, check out the book. I appreciate it. This is my, this is my right hook. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> any, anything else on, on your mind? Um, how much longer are you going to do the, how long are you gonna do the podcast? <sighs> you know, it's been almost three years, 245 episodes today, and I don't see myself slowing down anytime soon. No. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger, the impact. Who was today's uh, guest? Today was just myself. It's greatness week, so it's Got all, it. every day I'm doing a Who was the last guest? Uh, the last guest, man, I'm drawing a blank right now. Can't remember. Recently, who have you had on recently? That I had. Uh, what um, happens is the reason you don't know is because you is you can them and then lay them and then roll yeah, them out. Exactly. Yeah, I had Phil Rosenthal actually. The oh yes, Phil. On Monday, yes, Phil. Yes, Good friend. Me. I did. Good dude. Um, so I had. He's interesting, right? He's hilarious. Yeah. Created. Everybody loves Raymond. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So he was great. Here, I'll finish with a quote. Okay. Do, do your th- yeah. Do your thing. So is it going to be? We find out that everyone's a freak? No, 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 okay. exactly. <laughs> this is a quote that's kind of like embodies, um, embodies what, you know, you've taught me and what I've learned my whole life. The reason that I feel like I've been able to get to where I'm at, and I think where everyone can get to where they're at, is a quote, I forget who said this, but when I heard it when I was a younger kid, it really meant a lot to me. It made me feel like I had a chance. And that's, uh, nobody cares uh, how much you know until they know how much you care. Hmm. I like that. My favorite quote is J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> is that appropriate? I like it. Thank you, brother. Thanks, man. Good luck. Appreciate you. Uh, you keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. <laughs>